it's Ron Funches. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I truly appreciate you for that. Uh, if you want to support me, I'm on the road a little bit in April and May and June. Uh, I'm going to... New dates have been announced for Denver, for Tacoma, Washington, for other places. <laughs> Appleton, Wisconsin. I know that one. Um, and then some more. Go to RobPunches.com. I have my Netflix is a joke shows. I know that. Um, you can get tickets for that if you're in Los Angeles for the Netflix is a joke festival. I'm hosting a brunch show. Brunches with Funches um, with Rory Scoville, Rick Glassman. Hopefully Laura Peak, but she doesn't know that. You don't even know she's been invited. Um, and then I have a fun voices show here in town as well for uh the festival. All all my dates, ronfunches.com. Follow me on Instagram. We're putting out a lot of content, reels, and old uh stuff that I did, new stand-up clips, a lot of new things coming out. So please go follow me on that. What are you looking up, Hogan? My dates? Coming to Florida, if you want to go there, Dania Beach, uh, rockfunches.com. Again, buy tickets and go. Oh, loot. Season two is out now with three episodes in. So it's perfect time to jump right on in. Um, I can, I've can i watched them and I can say without a doubt, great fucking show. It's amazing. It's a good show. This latest episode was my favorite episode so far. It's really funny, really coming together as a cast. Um, and so if you haven't, Seen loot yet? That was the perfect time. Jump on board. Maya Rudolph, Joe Campuster, Nat Faxon, myself, uh, Stephanie Styles, recently married. Is there a lot of great things going on? So go watch Loot Season 2, Apple TV. I would truly like that. You can also watch Rock, Paper, Scissors on Nickelodeon that I am in. And as well as I feel like I'm in another show, but I can't recall. I don't know. <laughs> think so that seems like it's it inside out that's what i'm thinking out inside out too coming to theaters june 14th so please don't see that i feel like you know i don't have to push you into that one that's inside out was a classic um other than that let's get to the show it's me, it's Ron. Thank you for supporting the show. Um, I appreciate that. If you do, I just want to give a special shout out to a couple of friends who supported us on Patreon at patreon.com uh, underscore getting better with Ron. I feel like that's it. I <laughs> Yo, right, there'll be a banner right here. And you can go there and support the podcast if you like. Like our friend Solar, who supported us off and on for the last couple of years. And we truly appreciate that. And that's what I love. If you have a chance and you're getting something from this podcast and you want to support it, please do. If some things change for you financially and you need to pull back, Hap, that's okay. I, I'm not trying, I, I'm not trying to gouge or uh just take people's money. But if you want to be a new supporter and get some love and get a shout out like our new friend Mel Michelle, that's the coolest name in hell. Um, <laughs> she, that seems cool. That's a great name. And thank you for supporting the podcast. I really appreciate it. And you can support it not just by money, but by feedback, by leading, uh, following the podcast on Instagram, following me on Instagram, and just chatting with me, talking back and forth helps build engagement, and that can help if you don't uh, think you can support financially. Um, Other than that, I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. I hope you're feeling loved and you're grateful for that love. Man, I had so much love around me this last weekend. (laughs) I truly had probably one of the best weekends of my life. I've been working all week on a game show that I can't talk about. But when you do hear about it, you'll be like, okay, I know it now. <laughs> and it's been really fun and a great experience. And I can't wait to talk about that because I've learned a lot about it. Um, and it's affirmed my, my my decision that I at some point would love to. I mean, I'm, I'm on a panel for this thing and I would love one day to host. And I'm... Just going to be patient and just learn and watch and watching this host and watch how they do things and um, just pick up game and just buy my time until opportunity arises. Cause I, but once I get it, oh, my God, I know I'm going to be an amazing host. Like, 
I'm built for it. I got the skill set. I got the sweetness. I have the heart. I got the, I want to engage. I also like to manipulate people. And so those are the things that you need as a host of a reality show. So it's fun for me. I used to not like it, but then I did the cooking show and they'd be like, we're about to chop somebody. And you, you first of all, you're like, oh, everybody, oh, I don't want to be mean. But somebody eventually says something. That you're like, oh, I don't mind chopping you at all. <laughs> and then you learn to have fun with it. Um, but mostly, there's two things I want to talk about for this solo episode. It's nice to see you guys. We've been doing a run of guest ones. Big shout out to Tahir Moore. His his internet, the, the more mob that came through in the last episode and help boost some YouTube numbers. I really appreciate you guys for that. And that was just a great conversation with I hear. I love my brother. I'm, I hope to can do more stuff with him. Um, and, but this weekend I went to the most beautiful wedding I ever been to. It was at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. That's already a good start. And then it was just full of lovely people. Some of the members, castmates, salute were there. Uh, some Broadway people were there. Just good people were there. Uh, the best casting agent in all of comedy was there, which lets you know how sweet this person was who was getting married. Was there to support Stephanie Styles, who plays Ainsley. And I'm not going to get into the details of a wedding because she didn't even want you to take pictures. So I imagine she would like to control the details. Um, but I just got to say, it was the most beautiful wedding I ever been to. And a testament and that true love exists. And sometimes you think about it as a movie way or in a fantasy novel way. And especially me living my life and going through two marriages being like, Oh, I never felt like how you see it in the movies, you know? And so I, at some points just was like, Oh, that's just not real. And life's just going to be a series of like, getting to know somebody for a little bit, having a little bit of fun, and then continuing to move on. And I've been generally okay with that. Uh, you know, sometimes a little lonely, but that's fine. But going to this wedding and seeing the love between the two of them, the way that they looked at each other, the beauty and the um, joy that it brought in other people watching them, and just how many good people that came there to support them and the fact that I showed up on night one of WrestleMania, that says a lot. Normally, I would just go to wherever WrestleMania is, and I would have been there. But since I was invited to this wrestle to this wedding months before, I had to support, and I love Stephanie. She's one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met in my life, a general true Disney princess. Like... I don't, I mean, I imagine she curses or has said, done bad things, but it doesn't seem that she would have. Her mom was wonderful, said that I'm a favorite cast member of the show. I imagine everyone excludes Maya Rudolph. <laughs> you wait, they say that, you know what I mean? They're like, of course, Maya, but out of everybody else, <laughs> I like you. And that made me feel good. And I told her I wouldn't tell Nat Faxon. And then I immediately went and told Nat Faxon. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just, you know, I, I, I made no secret that over the last probably year and a half, I've been struggling with my own depression and um, dealing with separation and divorce and trust issues and feeling about love and it was just nice to be in a place that made me realize that true love does exist and I can um with work and luck and working on myself and being my best self hopefully attract someone that makes me look at them like they're my world and my everything and that I'm just fine without them but that I'm better with them you know um, and you know it when you see it, and I've seen it with a few people where you look at them and go, oh, they found it, and they click, and of course they're going to have to work at it, but, man, if they break up, I'm just going to believe that, like, true love does not exist whatsoever, so they got to stay together. But 
<laughs> so I just wanted to thank Stephanie for inviting me. Um, I really appreciate that. There's also, I don't think I've ever been to a cast member of a show that I've done wedding of any type ever. Um, maybe a birthday party, yeah, but a wedding, no, no. There's no one who would have invited me that I would have also gone to. So Stephanie is uh, one of one and a true, true angel. And I just wish her and her husband the best, whose name I do know, but I don't know if I should say it out loud. But in case you guys are like, oh, he keeps saying her name, but never his name. I do know his name. I just don't want to. It is a very general name. So maybe I could just say it. But <laughs> again, I'm, wor- I'm valuing privacy. Um, but also check Stephanie out and the new Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes, um, making out with Vince Vaughn. That seems super cool. So um, check her out. She's tremendously talented. Um, and the other part of my weekend that I posted about on my Instagram and um, really enjoyed and um, I can't say that I'm fully out of my depression. I think I am, but you know how that works. Then it's like, come back, bitch, scorpion. Get over here. I didn't even want to say it because it's kind of hacking. and You can hear it in your own head, but sometimes you just got to reach and grab the low hanging fruit. Um <laughs> But um, I've been doing jujitsu for about 16 months. And I when I did it, basically, and I think I need to probably explain this out just in case anybody else is going through the same situation um, and anybody else is dealing with things that they, and they know their own mental health and they know their cycle. I mean, it's a process of me knowing me over the past 41 years now. Um, and basically I've been feeling very low and very down and very depressed a little bit before I decided to file for divorce. And then once I did file, um, once I decided to file, I, before I did everything and got in order, I also put um, a mental health plan in place for myself because I had been divorced before. I remembered how I handled it before, which I think is one of the reasons how I ended up in a negative relationship again. Um, But I didn't handle it well. I was destructive to myself with food and sex and chasing women and sometimes being um, not nice to women about their feelings and about whether them wanting to be in a, are honest about my intentions about wanting to not be in a relationship. Um, I want to be very specific because when you say not nice, you, you know, you, you, you could be, people could take things all over the place. So <laughs> still quite a gentleman. Uh, sometimes got a little more, you know, I think sometimes you're to get low in a relationship. You want to hop into a new relationship as quick as possible to get over things. And sometimes, um, I would then project onto someone else that, that I was like, oh, I'm so into you, even though like I had not even gone out with them that much yet. So uh, I didn't want to do any of that again. So <clears throat> before I filed, I put together a list of things that I needed to do for my mental health. And I put that I wanted to make sure that I started going to concerts, that I had to maintain my workouts, that I needed to maintain my diet. Um, but not beat myself up. Of course, there was going to be some days where I cried and ate uh, an entire foot long sub. Um, perhaps do my combo where I order a cold sub, hot sub, and eat half of each for lunch and then half of the rest for dinner. Uh, so <laughs> it's the it's the solid food version of the Britney Spears where she has a cold drink, hot drink. I do cold sub, hop sub. That's the run punches. So. <laughs> Have a little chicken parmesan and a coca combo. You need both, baby. Um, (laughs) uh, So I come up with this list and I had talked to people on the podcast about jujitsu. I know a lot of comedians who take jujitsu and had mostly thought about it in mostly an aggro, I'm a guy and I want to destroy you type of way. And I was like, that's not my vibe. So I never really thought about it until talking to Freddie Prince Jr. on this podcast and the way he talked about it with spirituality and acting and um, confidence. And I knew that does those were some of the things that I were shot in me with my confidence and my feeling strong and feeling like a man. Um, and so 
at the beginning of, you know, we got separated in October, November, and in January, I enrolled in the uh, Jean-Jacques Mercado School in Woodland Hills, and it just started going and getting my butt kicked. And then this weekend, uh, my professor, Jay, Jay Zabalos, um, reached out to me and told me that they were doing a belt ceremony at people. And he was like, you should come and watch and see how people, um, basically cause I've been doing privates and I don't really interact with the class that much that, and there's a lot of people, it was like a hundred people there. And so I wanted to mostly get involved in the community. And when I went, it was great because you get to hear all the people who get black belts, they get a, give a little speech about what jujitsu has meant to them and how it's changed their life. And I <clears throat> really enjoyed it because it, for a while, I even though I enjoyed myself in class and I was fun, I was like, oh, all the rest of these guys are like athletes and um, trying to murder people and doing this because they like just grew up doing this. I didn't, I was like, I'm just doing this because I, I felt weak and I wanted to feel strong. And to hear so many of them come from the same background, different stories, but the same background where people talk about how they had gotten a divorce and were at their lowest and then found jujitsu or they had, had a health scare had been, you know, sedentary their whole life and not really working out. And, um, you know, the doctor telling them that they were going to need a bunch of medication or worse, possibly going to die. And they found jujitsu. Um, hearing people who were just poor and uh, moved straight f from another country where jujitsu was popular, like, I mean, like Jean Jacques himself, where he talked about where he moved from Brazil, where his family already was a legendary name, and moved to America, where people hadn't even heard about this thing and started out of his garage and just on his trust and belief in himself, now has built a, you know, a powerhouse and a legendary school. And to hear all these stories, it just reminded me so much of my own journey in comedy and how, like, all, all artistic endeavors kind of have this thing where, like, people fall, find it and, and get calling. And a lot of times they get saved. My life's been saved by comedy. And I feel like my life has, again, been saved by, by jujitsu. And... I didn't get to do a speech because I just got a blue belt. That's the whole point of this story is that I went not thinking I was getting anything. My trainer talked to me a couple times and he was like, man, you're doing really good. You know, he's like, if we, we don't do stripes here, but if we did do stripes, you would probably get a couple stripes on your white belt. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I, they were giving stripes. And I was like, hey, I thought you guys didn't give stripes at this belt ceremony. And they were giving out stripes to the white belts and then they moved along. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, maybe he was just telling me that to build my confidence. And then they were like doing promotions to blue belts. And he just talked about how hard I've been working and coming in, even though I got to travel so much and do all my comedies and all my other stuff and dealing with this divorce still. And <laughs> so, and then I got my blue belt and it sent such a joy through me. That's indescribable. It like woke me up. It's a, Oh, <laughs> it's like I had been in a depression For so long And I knew it And I've been fighting it And I've been waiting for it to lift And I've been trying You know, eating healthy But basically Like I just kept dragging myself to stuff Even though I didn't feel like going Like there were most weeks I did The reason I kept going to jujitsu, Even though I certainly When I showed up I felt fat and unskilled And Still feel unskilled, but feel, feel, uh, like no knowledge, like it's such a like falling into a well and not even knowing how to swim. You know, it just was just this deep, deep knowledge of so many different things, so many ways of moving my body, moving my legs and moving my hips in ways that I had never done before. And to slowly 
gain knowledge and slowly feel more confident and slowly feel like, okay, I know I'm doing it now. If, if I feel like if you don't know any jujitsu, I could probably beat you in jujitsu most likely. And unless you're just a natural, I guess. But when I got my blue belt, it just, and it's just a blue belt, second belt, but not black belt. But I know it means so much to me. It's one of my greatest accomplishments. Like I've gotten varieties, top 10 comics. This is better than that. I got some other stuff. Okay, I think this might be my favorite besides my kids. Um, because it's something I got when I was at my lowest and I didn't feel good and I didn't feel strong. And I didn't feel like I would ever. I didn't even fathom having anything else besides the white belt. Never even brought it up. And to get this, it just opened my idea, my mind, not only to how far I can get in jujitsu, which I hopefully will do it for a lifetime. And maybe when I'm 60 or 70, I will get a black belt and that'd be super cool. Um, but it also opened my mind to my opportunities in everything, in comedy and business as a father, when I am capable of that, if I could do this, if I could stick to this, something that I had fully no knowledge and, and no instinct in and could build myself up into getting recognition, then I can do anything. And it just made my depression lift right then and there. And of course, people need medication, they need things. I don't want to discount people who are clinically depressed. I think I'm going was going through a stress and trauma based depression. Um, but there's just I think there's something about finding something, but there's there's avenues when we get go through trauma, I've been through trauma before, and there's roads that we can take that can be both destructive. We can take the destruction that has happened to us and then pile on by being destructive to ourselves or you can do the hard work of working on yourself and learning about yourself and it doesn't have to be jujitsu it could be anything but there's something that you probably want to do that you want to try that calls to you and maybe you feel too old to start maybe you feel like you don't have the money to maybe you feel like you don't have the time to but i feel like you don't you have the don't have the time not to Time goes by so fast and life is so short and you're going to feel like I mean, my biggest regret right now is that I didn't start this sooner because I'm like, oh, I probably won't be a black belt till I'm 60 or 70. I would have loved to start it when I'm 20 and I could have been a black belt in my 40s. That would have been super cool. But I'm not going to beat myself up about that. I'm just going to keep going until I get my black belt because I want to enroll my sons in jujitsu. And I, they can't get ahead of me. It's going to be like, we're just going to have just full kung fu fights in my house at some point. <laughs> just geed up. Oh, my God. My son getting with Teddy comes home from fifth grade. He's got a D. And then for the math, I'm like, you better put your gi on, boy. <laughs> we got to work this out. <laughs> It would be fun. I would love that. Uh, but again, it's just, it's a, I love a marker. You know, my blue belt is a blue belt. It's people who, it's the second one. It goes white, blue, purple, brown, black. And so it's not that far up the ladder. But the fact that I could take a step makes me feel amazing. It made me, it felt like a black belt. I wanted to give a speech. They wouldn't let me. So I'm doing it here. <laughs> so I just want to say, like I did on my Instagram, thank you to Jay. Thank you to Jean Jacques. Thank you to Professor Mark. Thank you to Steve O. Thank you to um, Freddie Prince Jr. Thank you to everybody who um, made me feel welcome, made me feel supported, because that's also something that's needed if you, um, one of the things that people talked about at the event was about living with the principle of jujitsu and, and spreading what you learn here. And the one, one thing that I learned so far that I try to instill already, but I'm trying to, to do it even more is like just being a positive for someone making their day better. Cause when 
I was stressed out or got some negative news from a lawyer or working so much, taking on, you know, I've been taking on as much work as I can. It just end up paying, you know, I've been getting divorced for, for almost two years. So you can imagine that it is not cheap. Um, so I just been taking on as much work as I can while still trying to be home for Teddy and Malcolm. And I've been wearing myself out. And so to, to have the people that were like, come, Man, keep coming, come in. If I missed it, we could jujitsu. Jay would fucking text me and be like, "Man, I'm gonna make sure I miss you. I'm gonna make sure I see you next week." It was never just like when you think of like martial arts and stuff like that. I think sometimes you think of like people like, prove it. You don't belong here. Get out! You get out of this arm bar and you can get here. Um, but it was been nothing like that. Nothing but support. And as I sweat all in this man's face, as my drawstring pants fall and show my ass crack. Nobody makes fun of me. Nobody makes me feel small. Everybody knows that I'm working and trying to get better and that's all they care about. So if you're trying to get better or you see somebody trying to get better, I think so often we make fun of people when they try new things. We make fun of them when they um, try to better themselves. I watched it happen to my mom when she wanted to become a nurse and when she was 50. People in her own family were like, you're going to need a nurse before you are a nurse. But she kept at it. And she did what she wanted. She became a nurse. And she ended up working for rich people and hated it. And then she worked at a prison. And then both her kids got rich. So she's just like, fuck it. That's the true story of my mom's nursing degree. <laughs> One day she was complaining about working at this prison so much, and usually never about the prisoners, always about her, her co workers. And I was like, You, I go, and I was just was like, well, I just want to make sure you know you don't have to do that. <laughs> you can stop and just live here if you want. You can stop and just live with Jocelyn too. She, we, we both got you. And it's. Um, and it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing so I say all that to really say I feel like I'm back hopefully I don't get drugged back down again I'm going to uh, do my very best not to but I keep it going with my plan trying new things that's why Pilates has been a, a godsend as well um, I'm now more open to love hopefully I'll find a sweet girlfriend that enjoys me and is hot and a freak but also super sweet and could bake well. Um, that makes their own money. And that's about it. I don't care anything else. I also some, do, does something that I could be proud of them about. And that's it. Um. <laughs> uh, so if that's you, <laughs> email us at getting better. <laughs> Uh, I'll find you in the streets, perhaps. I don't know. Who knows where I'll find anybody? That's the one thing I know. I'm like, I don't, all I do is work. So I don't know where I'll meet someone. Um, and I don't really care. But I just love, uh, I love love. And I'm happy that I saw it in many forms this weekend. Man, the, you you never seen so many tough looking dudes crying. At this black belt ceremony, a bunch of black belt dudes just crying and holding back tears each time they got promoted because they know how much hard work and struggle it takes. And it was beautiful, man, watching people get choked up and tell their stories about where they came from and how far they made it. And also, it's weird how many of them just look like they couldn't beat up anybody. And then you're like, oh, that dude's a fucking third degree black belt. That's just cool. That's why you can't fuck with nobody out here. I look soft as fuck, but I could fucking choke the shit out of you and fucking put you in an arm bar, Kimura. I got all that shit going. So like, I wouldn't fuck with me um, unless you got good. <laughs> Then you win. <laughs> uh, but I hope you find something. If you're struggling, I hope you find something that pulls you out like I did. And not just with the jujitsu, but man, I really appreciate all the people who checked in on me and um, 
supported me and just my mom especially, you know, I know how much she, I could tell, you know, she could, by the fact that she kept showing up here randomly. <laughs> she just kept showing up on random weekends being like, I just want to make sure you're doing good. <laughs> uh, Cause she could see it. And, and then she would tell me that, um, my assistant and my nanny would give her updates and let her know that I was doing, not doing well. And, um, I appreciate that, you know, as much as I don't like snitches. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. I surround myself with people who genuinely care about my well-being and notice when I'm not doing well. Um, so, and, you know, and that's it. That's one of the main lessons that you learn in things like this. Who's there for you when you need them? So hope you have people in your corner. I uh, hope you find your thing. Um, thank you so much to Jiu-Jitsu and, again, John jock and every, and, um, Jay and Mark and everybody who's taking me in. Um, and it's just the beginning, a lifelong journey. I'm a blue belt in jujitsu and a blue belt in life. And let's get the black belt and master this and have fun. Work hard at our craft. Get better. Challenge ourselves. Don't just keep doing the same thing over and over again every day. And then being like, okay, that's it. I did life. Challenge yourself. Have fun. Push yourself. It's, it's good out there. I might learn how to play the piano. Who knows? Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Maybe with a guest. Who knows? Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it!